Hey everybody, this is Chris with Beanville Bites Food Tour. Just wanted to welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. And uh, today we've got a, a real special treat uh, for our tour today. We're going to uh, uh, go uh, across through downtown Mobile and uh, we're gonna begin here at Bienville Square and uh, we're gonna go to Bienville Square, Cathedral Square, and we'll also uh, make a stop by two historic churches in downtown Mobile. Uh, the steeple, uh, which is uh, traditionally St. Francis Street Methodist Church. And, uh, and the second church that we're going to visit is going to be the Cathedral of the Immacul Immaculate Conception. And so I've got uh, Ryan here with us, and, uh, and we're tour guides with Bienville Bites Food Tour. Uh, if you uh, are not familiar with Bienville Bites, we are a, a walking food tour through downtown Mobile. And uh, every weekend... Uh, we visit different restaurants, uh, uh, some of the best restaurants in downtown Mobile. Uh, tastes a lot of good food, and we talk about the history of Mobile on our tour. And so, you know, we're really passionate about the history of Mobile. And, uh, and, and you know, we really miss sharing it with you uh, weekly on our tours. And so, you know, we thought this would be a good way for us to, uh, you know, just kind of uh, uh, share the history of Mobile and, uh, and, and hope that uh, everybody's at home safe. And, um, and so, anyway, yeah, we're going to begin and um kind of turn the camera around here so uh here we're at Bienville square um and, and and you know to kind of start off you know who is Bienville? uh you know being we're Bienville bites Bienville square um you know, Bienville was the founder of mobile uh his brother uh diaberville and Bienville were sent over by king louis the 14th and if you watched our video last week um, our Royal Street tour, you know, we really talked really in depth about uh, the history of Mobile and its founding uh, at 27 Mile Bluff, which is uh, the original location of Mobile, uh, where Mobile was founded in 1702. And the original uh, location of Mobile, like I said, 27 miles north of where we are now on the banks of the Mobile River, a place called 27 Mile Bluff. And it was up there where Bienville and Diaberville, both brothers, uh, were, uh, you know, control started the colony up there. Diaberville actually died in 1704. That left Bienville as the governor of the colony. And so, uh, like I said, a lot of, uh, you know, he was very vital in the beginning stages of Mobile. Uh, he was also uh, very vital in uh, moving the location of Mobile. Uh, so in 1711, there was a lot of flooding at the old Mobile site, 27 Mile Bluff. And so that, Bienville was scouting the river for new locations. And, uh, and where we are now, the current location, uh, is where we have been since 1711. Now, I do want to kind of fast forward a, a, a little while here now, and I'm going to kind of come over to this cross that you'll see in the background. Now, the cross that you see over here was placed here in 1906, and it honors Bienville bringing Christianity to North America. And so it was said that uh, Bienville would uh, minister his Catholic faith to a lot of the local Indian tribes in this area, the Malvilla Indians in particular, uh, which Mobile was named after the Malvilla Indians uh, that were in this area, uh, especially 27 Mile Bluff. And so, um, yeah, that's why they placed the, the, the cross here in 1906 in honor of that. Now, you have to know that Bienville was also uh, very much influenced by the natives in this area as well. Uh, it was also said in history that Bienville was very fond of getting tattoos from the Indian tribe. So he did this kind of as a way... Um, you know, to build trust with the local Indians that were in this area. So Bienville would go and he would hop in his canoe. He would, uh, you know, strip down to a loincloth and let the natives tattoo him. And, uh, his, you know, history tells us he was very fond of snakes. Uh, so Bienville had a lot of snake tattoos, um, which is something, you know, if you also uh, tour Mobile, you, you will see uh, snakes throughout the city uh, on power lines and... Uh, on, on maybe on different buildings and things like that, you'll see these snakes. And those, if you do see a snake, that does uh, signify, uh, you know, Bienville being a uh, having snake tattoos um, all, all over him. So, uh, kind of a you know maybe an untold story. Now I'm going to turn it around here, and uh, like I said, I've got Ryan here, our other tour guide, yes. and uh, and Ryan is going to tell us a little bit about the history of Bienville Square and the park here. Yeah, after the Americans took control of the Bienville Square after the War of 1812 from the Spanish, uh, Congress deemed this forever to be a, a, a park in the city. Uh, some of the oaks that we see here are about 200 years old, and um, 
you know, the, uh, the fountain that we have here to our left is put here in honor of Dr. George Ketchum. Uh, it was put here in 1890. Uh, Dr. Ketchum is uh, responsible for bringing clean drinking water to the city of Mobile. And, um, and so, but the park really didn't start to take shape until about the 1850s. Up until that time, uh, there was a lot of cattle and sheep and pigs that were raised here. Uh, but it wasn't until the city sort of took control in 1849, they began to put in these park benches. Uh, they began to put in uh, sidewalks and uh, sort of formed in what we have here today. Um, now the bandstand, uh, just on the other side of the fountain here, uh, was donated by Sears and Roebuck uh, in 1941. And so that was a, a very kind act of them to, to give us that bandstand. But one of the key things that happened here in this park in 1905 is Teddy Roosevelt uh, came to our city and uh, talked about the importance of the Panama Canal uh, to Mobile, uh, being that Mobile is the 10th largest port in America. So a lot of history here uh, throughout the years in a place where Mobilians love to, to visit and hang out here uh, in the city. So yeah, it is a beautiful day. Uh, and so yeah, if y'all want to leave some comments, you know, we're going to, we'll make this, you know, pretty interactive and, and, uh, yeah, our next stop, we're going to go to the, uh, the steeple, uh, which has uh, traditionally been the congregation of the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. Uh, the St. Francis Street Methodist Church was formed in 1842. Uh, so that was the first time that they, uh, you know, opened their, their doors to a congregation. And uh, you have to know that it, after the Civil War here in Mobile, uh, in 1865, there was a very large... Um, explosion. Uh, so there was a, a large ammunition depot that was just north of town, north of downtown. And, um, and, and that, that, that depot exploded and it literally rocked the entire city of Mobile. Uh, it killed 300 people. Uh, many, many blocks of Mobile, uh, were completely, uh, devastated and demolished. Uh, and, and so there was a large fire. And, and like I said, it was just, that was one of the worst days probably in Mobile, hi Mobile's history. Now you kind of see the steeple here. Uh, we're coming up on it here, the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. So the, the, the St. Francis Street Methodist Church, the original building that was here in this location was heavily damaged uh, after the Civil War, the ammunition depot. And, and so they had to rebuild the church. Um, and they didn't, they didn't rebuild the church until 1890, 1896 was when the current structure was built. And, and, and it's and it's a very historic Queen Anne style architecture. I come up on. We got some got some guys working downtown. Quiet streets. But yeah, coming up here on on the, the beautiful mahogany doors of the of the of the steeple, the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. Now, one really cool story that come from the St. Francis Street Methodist Church congregation uh, was one of the old pastors in the 1840s, his name was Holland McTeer. Now, he met his wife here in the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. He was a pastor, and uh, he met his wife here. Now, he had a grand vision of establishing a university, a Methodist university uh, in the South, and that was his goal. Uh, now, he met his wife here, her name was Amelia. Her cousin was Frank Armstrong. She ended up marrying a man named Cornelius Vanderbilt. And, uh, you know, there was a, they ended up moving to Nashville um, after they left here as the pastors of the church. They ended up pastoring a church in Nashville. And it was there where they finally convinced uh, Mrs. Uh, you know, Crawford, uh, Frank Crawford ended up marrying uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt. And they convinced him to donate $1 million to their fund to start a Methodist university in the South. And that became Vanderbilt University. Now, you know, of course, Mobile did not uh, see the benefit of uh, having Vanderbilt University located here in Mobile. But you can say that a lot of the relationships that were made, you know, here in this church and in this congregation uh, were made right here at the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. And that formed what we know now today as uh, Vanderbilt University. So as we are going to, uh, 
we're going to move along. We're going to go to our next stop. It's going to be Cathedral Square. And we're going to take a, a little walk around Cathedral Square and take you to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, and, and one more story about uh, the St. Francis Street Methodist Church. Um, one really cool story that I love to tell uh, happened in 1878. The women of the St. Francis Street Methodist Church uh, published a cookbook. And inside that cookbook is the Gulf, or the name of it was the Gulf City Cookbook. And inside that cookbook is the oldest known recipe in the United States for jambalaya. So, you know, I like to tell people, you know, I'm sorry for everybody that's watching in New Orleans, but, um, you know, hey, until New Orleans and Louisiana, until y'all can have a, uh, until y'all can come out with a, a recipe older than 1878, um, you know, we're going to have to claim uh, jambalaya starting right here in Mobile. So, um, <laughs> we, we need to, we need to get that going, y'all. We need to get a, uh calling all our restaurant owners out. We need to get a lot of jambalaya on our menu and promote that, hey, Mobile is the birthplace of jambalaya also. Now, I hope y'all are uh, supporting our restaurants. You know, our restaurants are really struggling right now. You know, a lot of our partners that we work with every week on our food tour, you know, a lot of them are shut down, but you know, still a lot of, of restaurants are still open and open for takeout. And so, yes, we do have a stay-at-home order right now, but you are allowed to uh, go takeout and do takeout restaurants. We own Jambalaya and Mardi Gras. Yeah, take that, New Orleans. <laughs> and yeah, there's my sister. This is real life, y'all. <laughs> All right, we're coming up on, uh, you can kind of see in the background, the. Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception and Cathedral Square. And, and, and please, y'all please share our video. We're going to do these every week. If y'all have got any suggestions, you know, for a tour um, that y'all would like us to do, you know, let us know in the comments or just send us an email, send me a text, something like that, and, and we'll... Uh, you know, we want to do these every Sunday at 1 o'clock just to kind of get out. And let y'all see some of downtown Mobile while you're sitting at home. All right, so we're coming up here on Cathedral Square, and I'm going to throw it back to Ryan. Okay, Cathedral Square was sort of the western limits of the city of Mobile during the Spanish rule. And, uh, in fact, this particular area would have been known as Campo Santo, which was a Spanish cemetery here in Mobile, meaning holy ground. So the ground you walk at Cathedral Square occupies some of the Mobile's oldest citizens. Uh, now, many of those citizens were moved to Church Street Cemetery, but others like Spanish soldiers and sailors, slaves, Indians, citizens uh, of little means are still buried right here in Cathedral Square. Uh, now, the Western expansion of uh, America era saw buildings in this location. Those buildings were torn down in the 70s and the park was built here uh, to reflect the cathedral here to our right. Um, this is also the site of market in the square, art walk, uh, the mac and cheese fest, and the grilled cheese cook-off. Uh, so again, it's one of our favorite places uh, to visit here in Mobile. It's uh, a site that all of our visitors that come and do the tour of Bimble Bites love and uh, it's a place that we've grown to enjoy too and I bring my family often uh, to visit. And, and you have to know that the, 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 the cathedral here, this is the, the first Catholic congregation was formed in 1703 at the old Mobile site, 27 Mile Bluff. And so that makes this congregation the oldest religious congregation in the state of Alabama. In 1703, they formed the church up there. In 1704, the first pastor was installed, uh, Henry de la Venti. Uh, and, and, for the very, and for the first century of Mobile's history, it was very much a Catholic city. Uh, and so, you know, still a lot of Catholic influence on our city. And, and there's one man we could probably really credit for that. His name was Michael Portier. He became the bishop of the church here in 1829. Uh, and Michael Portier, Bishop Portier, that's actually his house. It's located across the street over here, built in 1834, a little Creole cottage sitting over there. Uh, but he, he, you know, he had a vision for a grand cathedral here. Uh, in this location, uh, the city of Mobile, and 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 and, and had the church designed. The cornerstone was laid 1834. Bishop Portier had a ceremony where they prayed and blessed over the cathedral. 
and you know he oversaw the construction until 1850 when it was finally completed and it was the tallest building in the city of mobile in 1850 if you can believe that and, and so um you know bishop portier would also go on to found spring hill college which is the oldest college in the state of alabama the first institute of higher learning in the state of alabama and, uh, and so he had a lot of influence here on in the city of Mobile. So much so, he's actually buried in the crypt of the church. And, uh, and then we're going to go inside. We're going to take y'all inside the church. Let y'all look around a little bit. And see some of the stained glass windows, especially. Um, those were, uh, you know, made in Germany. Late 1800s, those were made. And, uh, and of course, they've been restored several times since then. Uh, and actually, just recently, they've been restored. If you ever get a chance to come inside the cathedral, it really is worth your time. It is one of the most beautiful buildings in the city mobile some of the stained glass windows. A lot of them uh, depict, the, uh, uh, depict Jesus. So yeah. Um, just wanted to give you all a little look inside the cathedral here. We're gonna go back outside. You know, one other interesting thing that happened here in the city uh, cathedral, uh, it happened to the cathedral. You know, this cathedral has, has seen many, uh, many devastating times. Um, it's seen, you know, fire. We've talked about uh, the explosion that occurred after the Civil War. Uh, this church building was heavily damaged during that time. Uh, after World War II, um, there was actually an airplane that struck one of the towers. There was a plane crash in downtown Mobile. Struck one of the towers. It was flying so low. It actually crashed. If you know where the Chamber of Commerce is currently, that's where the, the plane actually crashed. Uh, but it took out, like I said, one of the towers here uh, on its descent to the ground. And so we've seen, you know, seen a lot of devastation to this church as, you know, and really in our city. And so, you know, it's kind of relevant to, you know, to our modern time a little bit. And, um, you know, it, Going back to our, our founding, 1711, you know, when there was a lot of flooding at the old Mobile site, and that caused a lot of disease and devastation there at the old colony, the old settlement, and it caused them to change location. So, you know, we would not even be in this current location if it hadn't been for, you know, a, a natural disaster. Um, and, and so I've asked, uh, I've asked Ryan, uh, our other tour guide, he's also a, a pastor uh, at Christ Redeemer Church. He's also one of the pastors there. And so I've asked him uh, if he would uh, if he would pray and pray for our city, and uh, especially during this time. And uh, and so we're gonna, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna let Ryan pray for us and pray for our city. Father, we do come to you during this um, very strange time in in the history of our world and our culture, uh, God, our country, our city, and um, and Lord, we just come to you um, because you really are. The only place to come that we can find strength and stability and so we come to the one who never changes and god we just pray for our city particularly mobile uh, god we pray for the restaurant owners uh, we pray for the waiters um, god we pray, pray for those who work in industry uh, god that have uh, their individual businesses that they've just started whether it be barber shops or massage therapists god we just pray for all those who are without work um, god that uh that you would just uh, send your people to comfort and help meet some of their needs, God. We know that in history, the church has always risen up, uh, God, to uh, strengthen uh, people in need, that we're called to love our neighbors as ourselves and even love our enemies. So, uh, Lord, just show us ways that we can do that uh, for the citizens here in Mobile. And, uh, Lord, we just want to lift up the first responders to you and ask that you would protect them and watch over them as they, as they care for our city. Uh, God, that we would uh, humble ourselves as a people and God, submit to the governing authorities and the uh, 
um, God, the regulations that have been put in place to uh, protect our city and protect us as individuals, uh, Father. And uh, God, we just pray for a cure, uh, God, for this disease. Uh, but God, that we would be reminded that though we live in a, in a world that has many beautiful places to visit, many beautiful places to see, and uh, God, that we would be reminded that we also live in a broken world, that there's something not right in our world, uh, Lord, and uh, God, that we would long for the day that you would uh, make all things new, that we would long for the day that the city of God would come down and, um, and God, bring restoration, uh, God, that would um, bring us back into union with you, uh, God, and we know that that union uh, can only happen through Christ. So we thank you for his work. We thank you for you humbling yourself and coming to earth and providing a way uh, for a new creation uh, God, to come about one day, uh, that all this sickness and death and tragedy in our world, uh, God, one day uh, will be made new. And so we thank you for your grace. We pray for your mercy. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would all press in to know you and that your church would rise up again at this point in time to serve and love our city and those around us. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching. I had a good time hanging out with y'all. If you, if you just joined us, you know, hey, catch the replay. I'm going to post this uh, to our Facebook feed right now. And so, um, yeah, I had a really good time hanging out with everybody. And, uh, and thanks for Ryan for, for joining me and, uh, and praying for our city. And so we pray, hope that y'all will keep praying for our city also. And, uh, and we'll see y'all again next week at, uh, at 1 o'clock. Uh, we'll do another virtual history tour uh, here in downtown Mobile. All right, well, so y'all uh, go eat our restaurants this week, uh, get some takeout, and we'll see y'all later. All right.